The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Hello, I'm Carl Seidel, the host of The People's View. The People's View is a program sponsored by the Nashua Republican City Committee. And if you want to find out more about our programs and the things that we're doing, uh, go to NashuaGOP.org. And uh, next uh, week on Wednesday, we'll be having a forum. Uh, and I look for the details on the website. Today, we have two people that we'll be talking to. One is Pete Silver, who's running as a representative from Ward 8, a New Hampshire representative. And the other is uh, Mr. Provencher uh, from the Nashua, uh, from the uh, New Hampshire GOP headquarters in Concord. So, Pete, welcome aboard. Here we are again, Andrew. Uh, welcome Thank to you. Uh, Pete. Talk a little bit again, uh, again about your uh, running f uh, for this open seat in Ward uh, Eight. Well, uh, as you know, I uh, was I left what I call prematurely last fall along with a, you and a bunch of my other colleagues. And I think it was more of a Obama train type mm -hmm. of thing than it was anything else. And, you know, it's that, it, that's our state government. It's local. You, know, you, you don't have a lot of media help on our side of the fence, so it gives us an opportunity, especially now when we're walking down the streets and talking to people and sharing with them the issues and just trying to do the cliche things that people talk about all the time but make them real when I talk to them. Like when I was in the street last Saturday, they're saying to people, you know, if you, if you run your government budget like you run your household, it would be an entirely different thing. You know, if you mm -hmm. are one of those people that just keep spending and spending and spending on credit cards, and then all of a sudden you can't pay the 20% interest and you stop paying, they take stuff from you. And I think we're seeing now that it's getting to the point that all those things are happening. And, and even in the federal level, if we don't take care of things here like Obamacare and start to be a voice against it, mm -hmm. that's going to help to have it become actually really embedded. And I, being in my profession, I've said it before, um, in medical sales my whole career, I can't think of a worse thing that you can have than federal health care. I mean, I talked to someone on the trail last week and I just said to him, you know, if you had a choice to go to the VA to get open heart surgery or go to Brigham Women's Hospital, where would you go? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the point, you know, especially here in, in our state, you've got Dartmouth, you know, you, you've got um, places like Boston, especially in Nashville, they're that close. Why wouldn't you want to use something like that? Mm -hmm. And for, for whatever reason, the other side has done a great job of leaving those little details out. Um, you know, sticking on Obamacare, you know, I don't think this can be said enough times because people don't know what it means, but the two biggest things in Obamacare or health care reform that are in Obamacare are tort reform and the ability to have interstate trade and insurance. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure people really understand how powerful that is, the, the tort reform aspect. And the it. fact that they have the IRS enforcing things. Well, again, I mean, so everybody has this big, you know, the IRS boogeyman, but they don't care if they're going to know their most personal details. Right. There was a thing the other day in the news on how... Um, it, it, they showed how guys can hack into it. And so now you have all your private information mm -hmm. that I have to take HIPAA pledges and everything else. Now it's going to be at some computer guy's access, never mind IRS. Mm -hmm. So I think that the thing that's nice about getting back involved in it is that you get to tell the stories, you get to talk to people. And almost everyone, if they're, if they're there, they, they want to talk to you. Whether they're with you or they're against you, but they do want to talk to you. Well, I know in your experience up there at the state level, uh, you talk to all the people of the Republican Party. I mean, we have a lot of different, I don't know, want to call it factions, but uh, views uh, of uh, how things should be done. 
and you were able to try to get those people together. How did you do that? Well, again, a lot of it's just facts. You know, like the saying goes, liars figure and figures don't lie. When you mm -hmm. sit somebody down and you explain to them what you're actually doing rather than some sound bite that was on, you know, a 50-second TV clip that they cut. And let's face it, a lot of times on our side of the fence, we don't get the most fair shot, you know, fair shot at the camera mm -hmm. or at the... The uh, media, you the, mean? Yeah, the media's <laughs> sl slightly biased, aren't they? Um, I went through a huge one myself, you know, you know the whole thing with the whole oh, yeah. Free Stater comment that I had made, in which, they, again, they took it completely out of context mm -hmm. and didn't play the whole clip, so it looked like I was going after them, where in fact the Free Staters, Libertarian groups in our state voted almost 90% of the time with us. Mm -hmm. And so all the, ma all the major issues, like the budget and things like that, we're all together on. The difference between the Republican Party, I think, and the Democratic Party right now is we are a bunch of independent thinkers. And when you mm -hmm. have that, mm -hmm. and if you mm -hmm. don't have ultimate rule that no matter what, you're just going to walk right off the cliff, you're going to have issues. You're going to you know, lock horns. And that's the whole thing with, we talk about all the time, voter ID. Right. Not one Democrat voted for voter ID. Mm -hmm. Not one. And that's you know, something simple, something that really has to be uh, shown that it's needed, too. Uh, I think people are just saying, well, well, there's never been any fraud, but we've seen lots of it. It hasn't been prosecuted, and it hasn't been followed up to, uh, to take care of the people that uh, have actually violated the voter rules well, and regulations. Well, it's funny you should say that, <laughs> I can give you two real recent incidents. Once uh -huh. in today's paper, um, my opponent thinks it's okay that, to have someone stay in their house that lives in Massachusetts, working on the Obama campaign, a paid worker, to vote here. You know, I, I'm not even sure if we really went to the college level of things and a college kid wants to vote in the presidential election mm -hmm. and you can prove they didn't vote already in Connecticut, where they're from mm -hmm. or wherever it is, I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But if you're not going to be a resident of my state, you shouldn't control my state government mm -hmm. and you know, my sometimes local, local government. government it, yeah. it, it depends what the election is. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. And you know, we, we tell a story, but for the viewers who don't know, you can look it up. It was in uh, 2008 when, as a goof, a girl from Dartmouth ran for county treasurer and won. Mm -hmm. has no from Michigan, I think she was. Mm -hmm. has no intention of being the treasurer. Well, it's an election, you can't, yeah. you know, I don't even know what the final result was. Maybe Andrew will know yeah, later, but head, yeah. um, it just it, it created chaos. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of us went through that this time. But you know, to me, it's a basic premise. If you are going to be a lawmaker, you should start out by following laws that are in Definitely. in play. And even if it's you know kind of a weak law that, with this domicile thing, ethically, you know. Mm -hmm. My favorite way to say this is if tomorrow we change the whole voting dynamic and all the union workers and all the minority voters vote Republican in the large group that they mm -hmm. do, the Democrats will be the first one out there championing for voter ID. Mm -hmm. They're the first ones. Mm -hmm. But because they have these weak systems that they, they infiltrate, like ours, um, they, they take advantage of it. Now, the, the latest thing to come out is what just by luck, I'm campaigning Saturday, and one of the streets I had was my street. So on Maysfield, I know everybody there, I've been there for almost 20 years. So I didn't fill anything out until I got back to the car to give the sheet so they have all the stats that, for guys like Andrew to look at who's doing what. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking, and you know where I live, Carl. And, mm -hmm. um, just a cul-de-sac. Just a cul-de-sac. Yeah. So the house in between me and the Lasky's, right in the middle, um, there, th there's three people in the house that are voter age, but two of them voted, the, the husband and wife voted. And there's these two other names in there that are two different last names. And I'm thinking to myself, like, they didn't have anybody staying with them or, you know, that's, that's not the time of year of college, you know. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any exchange students or anything. We know who they are. So my wife was working. When she came home, I showed her and she looked at me and she says, I'm 99% sure those are the people they bought the house from. 17 years ago. So sure enough, we look into it. They voted these two. Now, if it's them or someone took the uh, way to use their names, mm -hmm. I don't really know. But, but they, they voted the vote two elect. They voted absentee in 2012 and 2008. 
Now, I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. How can you think that's fair? So essentially, my neighbors, mm -hmm. their votes are canceled out. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, can I prove who they voted for? No, you can't see the voting thing. But let's face it, any type of voting fraud thing you've ever heard of, it's not usually Republicans doing it. So... Have you raised any question with the town clerk how they stayed on the polls that long? Um, well, they, some people actually went down there today to look into it. So it's definitely you know, a story to be continued. Uh, he is going to send it up to the attorney general's office. He thought it was you know, egregious enough that it needs to be looked into. I mean, how can you deny it? Yeah. It's, it, yeah. If I had it's a not bet, hard to vote absentee ballot, is it? Well, I mean, that shows one way, that the reverse way. All you have to do is claim you live there. Yeah, and I That's guess I don't know how they the, attained the, the ballot. I don't yeah. know how they got it. And again, for whatever reason, I don't think, I, if I had to bet, I don't think it's those people. I think somebody has a list, mm -hmm. and they, they know how to use that, those names on the list. Like maybe it is people who sold their house 10 years plus. I, I don't know, but in today's computer day and age, you can mm -hmm. generate anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it's important to know, too, you know, that with the voter ID and the measures that were put forward, um, Pete being uh, part of that group um, just a little while ago, these are laws that are still very popular here in New Hampshire today. And although there were you know, threats and ideas that there would be chaos at the polls, mm -hmm. we've gone through some elections now. There hasn't been these you know, long lines problem. or people denied mm -hmm. and uh, crazy measures. So I think when you hear these stories of um, you know, people not living in their home for 17 years and somehow them sending absentee ballots out, I think it, it raises enough of a question to say, clearly this is something that's worth looking into, something mm -hmm. that's worth uh, mm -hmm. putting some effort forth in. And I think that the Republicans in the legislature um, a few years back were chief among those and, and were happy to step up and, and put together a, a good comprehensive law. So I think you, you look now at some of the scare tactics that were used back then saying that people were going to be turned away and they weren't going to be able to get their votes heard. And uh, that hasn't been the case. And we're still hearing some, some stories about... Um, you know, some, some possible fraud that could be in existence. Well, to that note, the day of the primary, mm -hmm. I was standing next to Carl Andrade, and he had a friend of his that was working the poll for him. So we're all holding signs. And I'm bored. I just say, you know, stamp my sign. Let's, let's, let's have a debate. And he said, all right, what do you want to debate? I said, let's, let's start with voter ID. So his friend says, well, I'm against it. And I said, really, tell me why. He said, and the, the classic mantra, what about the 89-year-old woman who hasn't voted, mm -hmm. who hasn't driven a car in 20 years, and doesn't have a license? And I said, first of all, maybe there's one of those in all of Nashua. Let's take <laughs> Nashua for the example. So you use the whole thing for one person. But even let's say that were true. She shows up here today to vote, and today how it's going to work, and, and I asked if he knew, and he didn't, really didn't know. But I said, today how it's going to work is that she's going to go and say, I don't have an ID. They'll say, okay, we'll fill out an affidavit of who you are, and then you can go vote. Now, the next election, I believe it's 2000, and not this one in November, it's the following one, right? I believe 14. so, right. In 14, in the, in the um, general election, now, if you, do, if you don't have an ID, you fill out the affidavit, and we'll take a picture and give you that free. So you, what, what's the excuse now? Anybody can just show up if they mm -hmm. want to show up and vote. And he said, you can do that, and... Carl looked at him and said, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> he said, well, I, I didn't know that. And I said, well, now what do you think about it? He said, well, I guess it's not so bad, is it? So it, it really was that simple. The conversation was about mm -hmm. that long that mm -hmm. that's how they push this thing is that it's a scare tactic like it always is. And the part that still grinds me with it is, again, when we went to override that veto, and Andrew, you were there counting votes. Yep. They, I can tell you exactly what happened. First, they had one guy that voted with us. It was a guy from Manchester, mm -hmm. I think. And then when they went around again, he even he didn't. But to, to live in this environment that we have, where we're representing less than 4,000 people, yeah. but to tell me that you, you live in a group of neighbors that none of them are for voter ID, regardless of their party, I don't buy it. Mm. They, they, that's not true. So once again... I go back to, A, if you're a lawmaker, you should respect the laws. B, you should try to hold yourself even above it at, at an ethical standard, at, at minimum, and represent everyone that's in your neighborhood. Now, my opponent, um, I'm sure, doesn't live with all Democrats around her. Mm -hmm. So all those other Republicans, they would want voter ID. Mm -hmm. So they need to know about things like that. And these are not, it's almost to me, 
like they would say if, if a Martian came down and looked at how things worked and they said that you're against voter ID, they would think like, yeah, you're joking. That's, no, <laughs> yeah. that's not true. Why would they be against it? And look what you have. I mean, you, yeah. at very least, my neighbor's two votes were canceled out in the 2012 election. Well, uh, what else do you think about the voting? Uh, uh, what about the same day registration that we have? We have that now. Is that uh, something we should keep uh, just for the, these people? Because we had like 15% of the state vote at the last election. That was same day yeah, you, you can hear arguments of both sides of it. And for a while, mm -hmm. I was kind of like, you know, the motor voter thing. They had me even convinced a little bit that that could be worse. Now I don't believe that. After mm -hmm. what I saw happen, mm -hmm. if you really are going to do the same day thing and, and whatever, however they did it. I, I to this day, I was almost 100% sure that there was no shenanigans. It was just they got the vote out. But when I start to see things like this, where you can prove that people that are running for office, so, so they're, that's high profile, are willing mm -hmm. to just <clears throat> throw caution to the wind that people vote out of their home. And when you can prove that People can send an absentee balance. What's to stop these, these stories you heard for years of people coming in bus loads? And mm -hmm. you know, I heard the Manchester thing. I don't know. I don't. I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. But maybe now I'm more open to believing it could happen. That if you have that kind of guts, because first of all, what's the consequence? Mm -hmm. Is there any mm -hmm. ever been anybody in this state? Nobody's followed up on a lot of complaints. Of voter fraud. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know of it. Mm. There's a woman I know in Ohio that voted, what was it, five or six times last time they caught her? Now, right. now what's going to happen to her? I don't know, but they caught her. She, she's, like, in trouble. But I don't know if anyone, my first term in 2008, I believe that they came up with, it was a ridiculous number, like seven. In the whole presidential election that they found to be fraudulent votes, mm -hmm. and they followed, at the hearing, they followed up on all but, I think, two at the time. Because mm -hmm. we had the hearing in judiciary. And I... Honestly, after that, I don't know what happened. But no, to believe that the same day registration thing, now that's going to tighten up a little bit with, vo with photo ID. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's definitely. for sure. Yeah, I think that's what has happened. A lot of them didn't have that photo ID even with them or a proof of their address. What, what do you think, that's, Andrew, with the, with the same day thing? Well, I think that you know, the, the bigger overarching idea here is that when there is something of, of need, that the state is looking at or needs to respond to or, or constituents and voters um, come and talk to their representatives and say, you know, this is something that you, know, mm -hmm. you should be aware of and think of. Um, good legislatures, good representatives take that and put it into action in the form of uh, good law and uh, making sure that those concerns are heard and conquered. I think if you look at the Republicans, um, the Republican majority in the House, and if you look uh, uh, currently with the Republican majority in the Senate, uh, we have a crystal clear image of Republicans listening to their constituents coming in, putting good law together. On the other hand, you have uh, Democrats currently in the majority in the House who have put together an 86% 86, uh, 86 increase in the gas tax. Mm -hmm. They have an increase in home fuel oil. They proposed a budget that had $260 million in increased taxes in it. I find it hard to believe that they're listening to their constituents, mm -hmm. that their constituents are coming to them and say, you know what, we really need the gas prices to go up 86%. Yeah. We really need more expensive home fuel costs. I find that hard to believe. So if you look at Republicans, especially on the idea of, um, of making our government uh, more efficient and effective, uh, taking small businesses, giving them good opportunities to succeed, and you look at things like voter ID, you have a, a real clear image of Republicans listening to their constituents, listening to the voters and saying, this is something that's important. This is something we need to put into action. So I think there's a clear contrast between Republicans in the State House and Democrats' approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, you're talking about a lot of fiscal ideas and stuff. The legislature has already dealt with the budget, the capital uh, uh, budget, as well as the regular spending budget. And now we find out that uh, the last previous budget came up with essentially a $70 million uh, excess. Uh, do you think that's going to influence uh, what happens in this next session, Pete? Well, I think that, unfortunately, a lot of people don't pay attention to that. And again, mm -hmm. that's another thing that gets spun. You have the governor trying to take credit for that budget, mm -hmm. which is, I, the gall is amazing to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think, again, if we had a little bit of help from our friends in the media, we'd get a story every now and again 
explaining what's going on, it would be a different story. And in fairness to the citizens, how are they to know? You know, mm -hmm. you and I are geeks in, with politics, mm -hmm. you know. You start to talk, uh, one of my good friends, John O'Brien, we, we, we were kind of like doing this thing with um, Alan West. Mm -hmm. Like, I think everybody knows who Alan West is. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked to one person yet outside my circle who even knows who he is. Okay. Not one. Again, they have to watch Fox News, I guess, because that's the only thing he's on. But um, he's kind of a high-profile guy. You know, he's done some things. But people just, I think part of it we bring on ourselves. I think people, politicians in general, Republicans and Democrats, don't necessarily have the greatest name, it's especially now. Look what's going on. They, mm -hmm. you know, everyone seems to think that it's, a lot of it is their fault. But then again, they're the ones who elected them. So... Voters do have a responsibility. That's why I think that when you have a voter ID, when you make it something sincere that you want to do, um, they, they take it more seriously and they look at it. You, you really should, like I said, the ones I knock on the door that are even are opposed to my politics, if they have legitimate reason why, which I haven't met a legitimate reason <laughs> yet, but um, hey, at least they did. If they could say to me, when I say to them, give me three things you like about Obamacare, yeah. and mm -hmm. they do the hubba da hubba da hubba da hubba, well, mm -hmm. no, that doesn't count then. That's a, just a, a mantra. They say, well, I like it because I believe that that's the best way for everybody to get health care, and that's the only way we're going to do it. If they believe that, mm -hmm. you know, God bless them. I wish they'd look into it more. As I said, you know, I think we're that, still finding out what the bill says. I mean, we keep hearing things new each day. Well, I mean, what more do you need to know than what? What government agency do you want yeah. over a private agency, except maybe the military? I mean, what, what do you want? I, I always ask them, if tomorrow you absolutely have to get a letter to somebody, mm -hmm. and you, if it doesn't get there, it's life or death, are you going to use the Postal Service or FedEx? I mean, mm -hmm. who's going to do Postal Service? Yeah. You know, that, again, that's, that's the part that the, the left has done such a marvelous job of bamboozling people that the government and ironically most of these people who are in charge now they were the hippies burning flags and everything <laughs> in the 60s against government and now they want bigger government i mean what they had to make up their minds well, a little confusion over there yeah well what do you think uh get back to new new hampshire legislation what do you think they're going to be the big issues in the next uh six months i or, started to look at some of the bills that are coming up mm -hmm. um one of the things w which kind of ties into this, myself personally, one of the reasons I want to get back into what I was going to try to do this last time, mm -hmm. I think that the um, legislature should go back the way it was in its, before 1976, I believe, where we met every other year. Mm -hmm. And um, again, uh, the example I give is Texas, is the 10th right. largest economy in the free world. They have 176 representatives, I believe, mm -hmm. and they meet every other year. And they seem to be able to do their budget. The problem is, I was looking at some of these bills, they're absurd. And, and in New Hampshire, for you, you folks who don't know, we're the only state still that allows every bill to have a hearing. So that whole process, again, for people who don't know, when a bill has a hearing, it has to have public notice. So you can't just switch. So if no one shows up to the bill, you can't say, okay, now we're going to move the other hearing up. You've got to wait. So you don't, you, know, you don't really know. You can guess. Mm -hmm. what, what, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that are on there, but... It, I'm just looking through them, shaking my head. And, and I don't know, there was 46 pages with an average of, I would say, about 30 bills on each page. <laughs> so there's got to be 1,000 bills in there. No, well, that's what we've had on the average. Yeah. Every session has been around 1,000, some a little bit higher, some a little bit lower. So but, there, there's, there's, you know, there, there's some in there that I'm sure they're going to try to come back to you know, take away things that we had done already. Uh, they, and that's the other thing. They keep renaming them, do the same bill, you know, would just change three or four words. And, you know, uh, you know if, if, if we can't get rid of go back to every other year, we should definitely have a rule where you can only hear a bill once yeah. in a, during a two-year session. Mm -hmm. and, and there's ways to write the legislation. I'm not a great writer, but there's people to help you do that so we can close those loopholes because it, it really is. But uh, are, we, are they going to focus on adding uh, taxes, or are they going to focus? I know they want to spend half of the uh, uh, surplus money instead of putting it in a rainy day fund, and there's nothing in the rainy, rainy day fund now. I'd, I'd say kind of one of the reasons why I think the, the House Democrats, at least, um, last term were very uh, 
forward with a lot of their tax increases and, and pushing a lot of things. Obviously, they see elections are coming up now, mm -hmm. and they know that there's a Republican Senate that has been holding the line, stopping taxes and fees, a Republican Senate that put together a strong budget, mm -hmm. a budget that is probably 99% of what the final pass budget was. Mm -hmm. So a budget that Senate Republicans put together, Governor Hassan called disastrous, terrible. Until it was um, voted in. And then, and then <laughs> as soon as we voted in, she was the first one to send a press release say, I'm happy I could put this budget together. So if you, if you, look, at, uh, you look at the piece of that budget, not increasing taxes, mm -hmm. making sure that uh, proper government's funded, you have Senate Republicans absolutely to thank for that. And you also have them to thank, uh, holding the line, making sure we don't have a gas tax mm -hmm, right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, making sure that um, they're doing everything they can to, to stop some of this real terrible legislation that uh, Terry Norelli and the Democrats have been putting forward in the House. Well, uh, maybe we ought to talk a little bit about something else, like uh, helping businesses come to New Hampshire and stuff. I noticed lately that we are getting some more interest in people moving into New Hampshire. I know you and I were both very much interested in getting uh, some laws passed uh, that made it more in, uh, valuable for the companies to come here, laws that uh, are already in other states, you know. Yeah, again, it's, it's just like everything else we talk. It's like voter ID, everything else. Right to work, the, the mm -hmm. whole name that Right to Work has gotten is completely taken out of contest. Mm -hmm. Just listen to the name. Yeah. I mean, Right to Work. So what, what's wrong, once again, to give me the right to choose if I want to be in a union or not? It's, mm -hmm. it's really not much more difficult than that. The difference is, is that you see these major corporations that know that they don't plan you know, for one year. They plan out for decades yeah. to mm -hmm. how they're going to pay people and their margins believe it or not you know do some ceos make too much money probably but even so in their budgets on how they pay the regular guy they have to plan it out yeah and you go to south carolina that boeing plant and i made sure and i was with a doc that has you know he's politically minded the meeting i was at but he's not a politician but he's bringing it up to the cab driver he said no there's there really isn't any un unemployment here there's tons of jobs because mm. those jobs, those big places create other jobs. They create restaurants, they create sure. hotel rooms, they create suppliers, uh, right. nightclubs, everything. I so I, I don't understand. And I go back to what Rick Perry said in my basement mm -hmm. when I interviewed him on my radio show. He said, you know what? You guys don't have any sales tax. You don't have any income tax. You get right to work. You might just put a sign in the beginning of the state that says open for business. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's just so obvious. And you talk to the, some of these union workers, they complain all the time about how their bosses are, are bilking them. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be part of it, but they're forced to be, especially mm -hmm. teachers, because mm -hmm. they don't make a lot of money. Teachers yeah. don't want to be in the Public union. unions, yeah. Very, most of the people I know that are teachers, if they had a choice, they would choose not to be in a union. But, you know, again, it's... Do you think something like that's going to come up in the next session? Um, I... You know, Carl, it may that the problem okay. we're going to have is the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, until we realistically, in this state, what we really need is a Republican governor. And until we do that, um, it's going to. Well, be how do tough. we get the word out now? That's so you're getting the word out in your ward. We're trying at this show trying to get Nashua to be a little bit more politically uh, knowledgeable. Uh, as you say, the media is. You know, if we're lucky, we get uh, ten percent of the good news. Well, one thing I learned is. Um, if I get back in there, I'm going to learn how to deal with the media in a more efficient way. And I think you're a small enough state that they can't really brush you off. Mm -hmm. If you have something to say, you know, I know how to say it now and uh, make sure it's not clipped and cut off and just throw little sound bites in there. It's really them. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, I, I, locally, nationally, internationally, the media is a very powerful source. And, you know, not like when we were kids mm -hmm. where... You know, the newspaper came out, if you're a big city, twice a day. You had news at 6 and 11, and that was it. Not 24-7, mm -hmm. trying to find things to do. And then look what they do on shows now. I mean, I mean these, these last two, you know, crazy events that happened, the one well, both in D.C., mm -hmm. they had everything wrong. You know, the guy, from the, the gun the guy had in the first one to the, the woman was shooting back. At the, I mean, it's first, yeah. not best. Maybe uh, we're seeing a little bit of a change. I understand that even the New York Times is criticizing the transparency of the cover, uh, national uh, uh, administration. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, what can we do here locally? Uh, can we, uh, should we get out? Uh, maybe, Andrew, you can throw something in from the state uh, GOP. How are we looking at getting better exposure out there? Sure, I think that the NHGOP right now is, is working uh, really hard to, to make sure we have a, a strong structure in place throughout the state where we're able to communicate with lots of different voters and lots of different people and express to them the basic ideas that we hold important for, for New Hampshire. And I think it's really a, it's, it's an old way of doing things versus a new way. Republicans, I think we have an idea. We want to bring more businesses into the state. Mm -hmm. We want to have more businesses come here, attract more jobs, make a good climate there so we can help support the essential needs of government. Uh, the Democrats, unfortunately, so far, their ideas seem to be the old top-down approach of, of mm -hmm. more government, of having the government in charge of more things. Uh, I think if you look at Obamacare alone, it's just been an interesting as aspect where um, the recent exchanges that have come out and, and the uh, online abilities to access those exchanges. Um, it's been a disaster, really. Mm -hmm. And this is really the best that we could put forward uh, for the government. <laughs> um, so I think that it's, it's important to note that these people are trying hard and doing their best, but there are some things that government does really well, and there are some things that the private sector does really well. And I think the Republicans, we have the approach of trying to find new ideas, trying to bring new ways and new policies of bringing more businesses, helping to uh, boost in this economy, as opposed to this same old approach of, well, let's just have the government do it. Let's just raise taxes right. and have the government take on another responsibility and another. I think we overburden our government in a lot of ways by doing that. I agree with you there. I think one thing that always bothered me up there is people didn't seem to understand that the best way to get more money income is by growing the tax base, not the taxes. Right. And uh, it's, it seems that it's so, you know, common sense Absolutely. that you kind of wonder why people don't get that. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a state that was very, mu uh, uh, very much involved in building up. Hopefully, uh, we're trying to turn that, and I hope this next state uh, session will will we'll have some laws that make it more encouraging to bring companies in. Yeah, the, the American people, and especially New Hampshireites, have a tendency to, they need to get maybe a two by four to the head. W once they get it, then mm -hmm. they don't turn back. And I think that, I think they're starting to get it. I know the people that I see out in the field that really um, are, are paying attention, they totally get it. But now it's incumbent upon them to tell their neighbors. Mm -hmm. you know, you, mm -hmm. it, we can't do it all as politicians. And I, again, the beauty of our system is that we really want to get paid to do it. But by the same token, that's also could be a detriment because there's people that don't really necessarily give it their all either. So it takes everybody. You know, you, you, if you use this government that we have, the way it was designed, mm -hmm. it's the oldest unchanged form of government in the country. If they actually, if the people use that to their advantage, we, it, the state would be unbelievable. Mm -hmm. If they actually talk to that rep that knocked on their door, or got the literature and called them and just said, hey, you said, here's your number, or sent them an email, and you know, these are the things that are important to me. And again, if, if you're the type of person that's looking for handouts, that thinks it's gonna be great to live off the government, you know, it's like anything else. Eventually, you're gonna bleed that vein dry, and then what are you gonna do then? And, and that, that's, I, I guess some EBT things failed where was it in? Oh, uh, yeah, the, in several states. And for one day, and there was yeah. chaos. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what's going to happen when it's gone? That's right. Uh, and you just, there's just well, nothing to do. Socialism is good until you run out other people's money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's happening. If you keep, uh, again, it gets back to some old proverbs, some old things like if you, you know, teach a, uh, feed a person to fish or you teach them how to fish, mm, yeah. you know, uh, that's a big difference. And that's what I think we want to do. We want to grow businesses. We want to grow jobs. We want to have uh, the government get out of the way because we can do pretty well ourselves. And I think that's the live free or die attitude in New Hampshire. Uh, and to get to your point about contacting the representatives, that is available. Anytime they, I mean, now with the internet, it's even more available. Mm -hmm. You go to our website, you go to the state website, you'll see all the issues there, you'll see the contacts, you can get phone numbers, you can get emails, and you can contact and say, hey, rep, I'd like to see something done on this issue. You can rest assured, when, when a rep gets personal calls, meaning like it's from somebody he knows specifically mm -hmm. is in his ward mm -hmm. or her ward, 
they, they take that seriously. When, when it's something that's a boilerplate from some you know, yeah, group you, out of Colorado right, or right. something or whatever, but when you, you know if it's mm -hmm. Mrs. Jones at 47 Lamb Road, then With you the know it's a number, real person. they mm -hmm. want you to call, then you call back. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, are you finding uh, that uh, is happening all over the state, Andrew? I, mean, I, that... I think that uh, you look at uh, Pete's race, for instance. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of people um, that have been coming to the uh, NHUP headquarters, mm -hmm. coming out to help us out at different events, volunteering, because they know Pete is a, a good guy, a family guy, a person who wants to hold the line on these taxes, who understands as a, a regular working class person, you know, the difficulties that are in the state right now, mm -hmm. has the experience previously of, of serving there and, and, and finding out what the important needs were for his constituents and helping to put those in place. So I think from across the state, we've had a lot of people come and say, you know, we need people like Pete back in Concord. We mm -hmm. need people who are willing to go there and, and actually be a representative of, of the people in his district um, instead of, you know, taking their orders from, you know, the New Hampshire Democratic Party. And, mm -hmm. and I think that Pete was very right when he says that the Republican Party in New Hampshire, we are a large party and a very diverse party, and that's a good thing. We have a lot of free thinkers, independent thinkers who want to bring different and new ideas to help better the state. Mm -hmm. um, we're not trying to use the old same formulas, um, you know, back of more government. Mm -hmm. You know, we're looking for new and innovative ideas. And I think that people see Pete's one of those new and innovative guys who's looking to actually help out. Um, so we've been really um, encouraged by the amount of support and help from across the state of Republicans, unaffiliated, undeclared, whatever you want to call them, people mm -hmm. from every walk of life, Democrats too, who are saying, you know, we need honest people like Pete back in Concord. Mm -hmm. Very good, old Pete. How's you got a lot of support for you. You need some local support. I mean, some mm -hmm. people have to contact well, you if you, you need know, some more volunteers to help you. I think again, the personal touch is better than mail. Right. If somebody knocks on your door and, and hands out some literature and. People see that, you know, if this person's willing to take time out of their Saturday or Sunday, whatever day it is, that there must mean something. So I think that has a lot of merit to it. So Andrew's organized um, some different, can we have different dates set up for canvassing, and mm -hmm. that's all on, uh, they, they will go to, to and Yeah, if they uh, contact uh, the NHGOP.org mm -hmm. um, or call the office, we'll be uh, certainly able to get them all the information they need if they're looking to help out in any way. And, Certainly, um, I think that this is an, a very important special election. The NHGOP has been looking at it as a, as a very important one for us to, uh, to, to go out and win, and we're doing everything we can to make sure that uh, we can you know, fully represent the people of these ward and, and get mm -hmm. Pete back into Concord. And for those that don't have uh, internet uh, contact, do you have a phone number Do you have? Absolutely. I don't have it on me right okay. now, but I can, uh, I can get it to you, and if, if you guys okay. post we'll this video we'll put it at after. the end of the uh, Perfect. program, and it'll be listed there so Wonderful. they can contact that number. And uh, Pete, I, uh, I remember you running your first time. <laughs> you had a big issue then, didn't you? I Parental sure did. notification. That's right. And that went over and we got it through. And I didn't see on the bills, I skimmed the bills, I didn't see that there was a, a, a repeal necessarily effort on it. Good. Um, but for the folks who don't know, just again, because they try to spin it, mm -hmm. it's parental notification when it comes to abortion. And again, being in my field, mm -hmm to do any type of medical procedure on your minor child and not you know about it is not having the parents it's absurd. know about it. It really yeah. is not, it's not even, like I don't know how you debate it, uh -huh. but if something should go wrong, well then it's your responsibility to take it to the emergency room. Right. And I think that was one of the things that really just, I'm, I'm not a money guy and my wife would be the first to tell you that, she keeps away from it because <laughs> I'll just spend it. So, I mean I know enough to, that you can't spend more than you have and that's about as far as I go with it. But when it comes to common sense issues like that, it's, um, it's nothing to do with abortion or anything like that. It's, it really is just common sense. You, mm -hmm. can't, mm -hmm. you can't do that. And that along kind of like with um, voter ID, they'll give the example of a, you know, a girl that was raped by a family member or something like that, which, which we know is not the percentage of what happens. That's a minority of what right. happens. So. When somebody t says something to you, the, the people out there, and it, it, the bill maybe doesn't exactly make sense, ask a couple of questions about it, because it probably doesn't make sense if it doesn't seem like it on the surface. And I, I think that's the thing that they put these things through and nobody knows. I mean, I was going through my neighborhood just showing people. I had to show them newspaper articles of it because they mm -hmm. thought I was making it up. And that can't be true. <laughs> no, it was. Yeah, and uh, we try to do that at our meetings every uh, second Thursday of every month. 
and everybody's invited to them, whether they're Republicans or not, mm -hmm. to hear the people talk. And we just did one with the uh, alderman candidates. And we had Republicans and a Democrat there uh, talking about why they wanted to be on, in the alderman. Uh, you'll hear some of the ideas. You can get to talk to them if you want afterwards. Uh, I think that's the open. That's what we want to try to do, get more of it out. And uh, maybe we have to have more on our website. But we try to keep things current and people aware of what the major issues are, both uh, in state and out of state. So, oh, it, you know what? Politics really isn't any different than your work mm -hmm. or your family life. Mm -hmm. If you live in your family life and you never talk to anyone in your family, never ask them any questions, basically just go home, eat, and leave, if something happens, why should you be surprised? Yeah. It's the same thing with your job. If you're getting a paycheck but you're not going to work, mm -hmm. eventually you're going to lose that job. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing that people have to do. Is it, 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 is it boring? You know, again, we're political geeks, but <laughs> the thing is, it's necessary. And I think, honestly, I think the other side counts when you're not paying attention. Because some of the, th the things they do, if people really knew what they were doing, they wouldn't do it. I think finally people are awake to some of the ideas. As you say, uh, Obamacare implementation has gone to pot. Sure. And, uh, you know, that's the train wreck they predicted yeah. <laughs> six months ago, whatever. Well, go locally. This yeah. principle that ban tag, oh, yeah. if the parents get together and they go to the school board and they want that principal discipline or they want the, the decision reversed, I guarantee enough of them do it, it will. Mm -hmm. But if they just sit home and they complain to their neighbor, but they don't do anything. Well, you know, that, uh, to me, they uh, looked at the symptom of what the problem was and they tried to eliminate the symptom rather than address the problem of discipline. The discipline of the students of not playing rough. They talked about bullying. Well, anything from tagging a kid too hard to yelling at somebody or cursing somebody, that's all bullying one way or another. They ought to implement a, uh, something that allows the teacher to discipline these kids when it happens, and they're not doing that. Mm. We've had some people on this show uh, before who are substitute teachers, mm -hmm. and they told us how undisciplined it is for a substitute teacher, which has no everyday contact with them, how wild they are in the class, and the principals don't control that. I think that's one thing we have to get back to. I don't know if you remember any incidences, but I can remember sometimes. I had that, a lot of rulers broken over my head. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or I'd go to the principal, and that was something you feared. And, uh, you know, I know if you got home and your parents heard about it, oh, my gosh. Yeah, you got it twice. Now yeah. the, the principals and the teachers have the parents come in to yell at them for yeah. having their kid get a bad grade. And t threaten to sue them. Yeah. I think that they, the there has to be some kind of... Uh, a protection for that. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, teachers unions and teachers are two entirely different things. Of course, mm -hmm. the teachers union will try to pin me on teachers. I admire teachers. To do what they do, God bless them. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like I said, I have a few friends it's that are an teachers. Advocation for, uh, to go in there every day and deal with some of these people. Yeah. I, I don't know how you do it. Yeah. I, I really don't know how you do it. I, I couldn't do it. But um, that is different from a union. And, you know, you go to the other extreme not like any other profession. Not every teacher is a good teacher and should be one. Because there could be someone like me that would be and it maybe doesn't belong there. No. But that's the point. You, you have to be able to be disciplined on, on the other end too. And, and once again, it's a big spin game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, with the media. We have to do something about it, trying to they get educated. They've got to help us, help us media. <laughs> Well, we're going to try to do a little bit more on this program, and we'd like to have you guys back after the successful election and talk about what the plans are for the coming legislative session. So if you plan on doing that, uh, we'd love to have you back and hear about uh, how the uh, Republicans are going to uh, do things, whatever they can do. And good luck for the, in the future. And thank you for listening in. This is another session of The People's View. Uh, Go to our website, nashuagop.org, and find out more about our organization and uh, the events that we hold, uh, especially the educational events. Thank you and good night.
The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.